I wrote a book called The Death of Discourse in a Wired World. And one of the things that we determined as a result of the research that we've done is that people tend to self-select their media by choosing media that agrees with them rather than media that challenges their thinking. So when I talk about the death of discourse, it's really that we haven't learned how to talk with people who hold ideas that are different than ours and certainly have not learned to talk to them in civil ways. Over the last three years, my research colleague Dan Schell and I have been dial testing presidential debates. In fact, we worked with CNN during the last presidential election in both the primary and the general elections in order to try to assist the process of getting citizen voices included in the debate process. We're very much committed to trying to help uh, find a way of restoring deliberative democracy, and that means thinking more about what the citizen voter thinks than just the pundits and the politicians. When we think about the use of social media, we have to consider young people and their use of media compared to the traditional advertising and television that's used by an older voting population. One of the things that we've recognized is that they are much more likely to be engaged in politics if they can interact with politics. So the social media aspects really engage young people in ways that uh, previous media forms have not. You know, when we think about what social media does, one of the impacts we need to look at is how it can be used prior to a poll taking the field or shortly before somebody enters the polling booth. The fact that you can get a mediated message minutes before you walk into a polling booth may actually have some impact on, upon um, the last recall or the last message that somebody sees. Um, there's no evidence to that as of yet, but it's certainly one of those areas we're going to be studying in the upcoming years. One of the things that social media does is it allows the average individual to access a political figure on kind of a personal level. And that changes the dynamic of leadership. It changes when we know um, whether you wear boxers or briefs. It changes whether we um, know about what your family did or the names of your pets and the things that make you more personal to us. And it may, in fact, distract us from the more important issues of governing and the ideas that you would implement when, when in office. Almost any time a politician can get on air, regardless of what show it is, whether it's Jay Leno or the Colbert Report or any of the other shows, it usually works in their favor. Name recognition is by far the most important thing that a politician can hope to gain from any media appearance. They'll forget what was said, but they'll never forget that you said it. As director of the SMU in London program, we have an opportunity to take students to uh, Great Britain every year and to teach them a little bit about British politics. One of the things that they always learn is how Brits have a sense of humor. And even though they take themselves seriously and the issues seriously, they also learn how to have a little fun along the way.